three, two, one. Amazon just launched its first satellites for Project Kuiper, directly competing with SpaceX's Space Internet. This big step could change how we get internet from space. Why does this matter? It's not just about faster internet, but a major shift in who leads in space technology. Keep watching as we explore how Amazon's move could shake up the space race and what it means for all of us. In Denver, Voyager Space was ambitious about launching Starlab, a new space station aimed to succeed the International Space Station as a hub for space commerce. Creating a space station wasn't easy and needed more help. So on October 4, 2023, Voyager Space joined forces with Northrop Grumman. They owned Cygnus, a spacecraft that flown 19 times, delivering loads of supplies to the ISS. Now, the plan was for Cygnus to supply Starlab. Even better, Cygnus was going to get an upgrade to dock with Starlab on its own, without needing people to help. This was a big deal. With the ability to dock by itself, Cygnus could keep Starlab running for at least five years, fitting well with NASA's big plan of boosting business activities in space, with Starlab being a major step towards that goal. With Voyager Space and its partners working hard on Starlab, excitement soared. They were laying down the plans for a new era of space exploration. The buzz around Starlab's space debut, marking a new chapter of human effort in low Earth orbit, was easy to feel. Project Kuiper is Amazon's answer to SpaceX's Starlink, using a bunch of small satellites to provide internet by bouncing signals between Earth and space gadgets. While the exact tech is a secret, Kuiper aims to provide internet speeds up to 400 megabits per second, faster than Starlink's 50 to 150 megabits per second, thanks to Amazon's 12 future ground relay stations. SpaceX has similar plans, but with about 3,500 satellites already in space, they have a lead with Blue Origin, owned by Amazon, is rushing to catch up with permission to launch 3,236 new Kuiper satellites by 2026. At first, these satellites were set to launch on ULA's new Vulcan rocket, but due to delays, nine Atlas V rockets were used instead. Deals with Ariane Space for their Ariane 6 rocket were also delayed. Even though they could have asked SpaceX for help, it seems Jeff Bezos, who owns Amazon and Blue Origin, chose not to. It might not be ideal, but it's what they decided. In July, Amazon shared plans for a big satellite processing center in Florida at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, marked as the prep spot for satellite launches once Blue Origin rockets are ready to fly. Recently, the FCC looked into an issue with Blue Origin's new Shepard vehicle, requiring some changes before approving more launches. Despite the hurdles, Amazon and Blue Origin keep pushing forward, mainly driven by their deals with the government, especially the US military. Unlike SpaceX, Project Kuiper is designed to connect with military satellite networks in low Earth orbit. Last October, Amazon's higher-ups and the military agreed on using Project Kuiper to improve the military's space network speed and coverage. The first two Kuiper test satellites will also test laser communication with these systems, showing the military's strong interest in speeding up Amazon's progress to compete with SpaceX. Despite the hurdles, Amazon and Blue Origin are carefully moving forward, possibly looking to offer cheaper options once they catch up, a common tactic for Amazon. Voyager, particularly its division called NanoRex, had a unique idea. They wanted to create a station named Starlab, with plans to launch it in a single mission around 2028. Remember, last year's NanoRex was testing cutting-edge technology in orbit, aiming to turn old rocket parts into pieces of their space station, Starlab. Even with the Space Partnership, their main idea stays the same, with goals to create a science park in space, filled with top-notch labs working in microgravity open to anyone who can pay, not just NASA. 
The big change in this project is Northrop Grumman's part, now set to provide an improved version of their Cygnus cargo drone for the station for the first five or so years. Let's go back to 2021 for a moment. NASA chose Northrop Grumman, Nanorax, and another company, Blue Origin. They were part of a NASA program to make new space stations. These stations would be used once the International Space Station is no longer in orbit, which is planned for the end of this decade. NASA had a new approach. They gave these companies their knowledge and some money. In return, NASA could use any new technology or facilities for this deal. But things changed. Northrop Grumman decided their original plan wouldn't work out. They're usually a company that makes parts, not big, complex projects. Plus, they probably didn't have enough money to finish the job. NASA gave each company some money for research and making prototypes. Blue Origin got $130 million, Nanorax got $160 million, and Northrop Grumman got about $125.638 million. So, Northrop Grumman made a smart choice. They decided to help Nanorax instead of trying to compete with the big companies. It seems like a good move. Starlab looks like a great plan for a station, and Northrop Grumman knows a lot about sending cargo. The only thing they had to let go of was the rest of their research money from NASA. NASA says they will give the remaining $89 million to the other projects that were still active. This includes the new partnership between Northrop Grumman and Voyager and another company, Axiom Space. Axiom Space is working on their own station using a module from an earlier experiment. Realizing you can't keep up with a competition must be tough, but Northrop Grumman is making a wise choice. Let's hope they get many contracts in the future. HotSat-1, operated by London-based SatView, represents a significant advancement in thermal imaging technology. Unlike previous imagers with a maximum resolution of 100 meters, HotSat-1 achieves an impressive 10-meter resolution, enhancing the clarity of thermal images tenfold. The satellite's ability to capture detailed heat pictures, even short videos, is a game changer for professionals like firefighters and climate scientists, allowing them to observe phenomena like wildfires and heat distribution in water bodies with unprecedented detail. One sector particularly benefiting from this technology is city planning. Traditional thermal images with 100 meter resolution were inadequate for detailed urban analysis. However, HotSat-1's 10-meter resolution provides granule insights. It reveals intricate urban layouts, including individual streets and parking lots. This level of detail is crucial, especially in places like England, where older homes often suffer from poor insulation. HotSat-1 can precisely identify buildings needing better insulation, aiding in energy efficiency efforts. Additionally, HotSat-1 addresses the challenge of urban heat island areas, significantly warmer than their surroundings, often due to large expanses of asphalt and densely packed buildings. Before, these heat islands were difficult to mitigate due to the lack of clear imagery. HotSat-1 provides the necessary visual clarity to plan effective cooling strategies. SnapView's ambition extends beyond HotSat-1. The company plans to launch a constellation of 8 to 10 similar satellites, envisioning a future where thermal imaging plays a pivotal role in urban development and environmental management. This technology, once primarily used for weather pattern data, now holds the potential to revolutionize how we build and improve our homes and cities. Building space stations has always been about showing off to other countries, learning new things, and facing tough problems. This bold step of making places for people to live above Earth started seriously in the later part of the 1900s, aiming for a time when humans could stay and work in space. The story of making space stations is mixed with competition between the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. 
the Soviets began this race by sending Salyut 1 to space in 1971, and then came more Salyut stations, each one better than the last. A strange but not well-known thing from this time is that the Soviet Salyut 3 space station had a 37-pound fast-shooting gun, which is odd in a peaceful story of exploring space. Next, the United States started the Skylab program and sent the Skylab space station into space in 1973. But the big moment of countries working together and amazing engineering came with the building of the International Space Station. The journey of making the ISS started in 1998, with sending the Zarya functional cargo block from Kazakhstan, marking the beginning of the hardest project of making something in space by many countries. Making the ISS was a huge task. One big problem was the never-before-seen number of spacewalks needed, a problem called the Wall of Eva. Even with problems, the group of countries, led mainly by the United States and Russia, kept going. The making of the ISS saw many technical and monetary problems, first imagined as freedom by US President Ronald Reagan in the 1980s. Nowadays, the story of building space stations keeps going with new people joining in. A company in Denver called Voyager Space wants to launch Starlab to take the ISS's place, showing the growing wish to keep humans living in space. Working with Northrop Grumman and their Cygnus spacecraft shows teamwork, reminding us of how nations work together on the ISS project. But building space stations isn't just for big governments or huge companies anymore. The story now has private companies like Axiom Space making their own stations. Mixing government and private work, shown by NASA working with different companies, hints at a time when space stations might be places for science, business, and maybe even new homes away from Earth. In another story of space-based internet, Project Kuiper and Starlink are racing to cover the world with satellites, hoping to fix Earth's internet problems. Having Amazon and SpaceX in this competition, along with the older story of building space stations, shows a wider picture of both competing and working together in exploring space. Also, better satellite tech, like Hotstat 1's heat picture taking ability, shows the growing uses of space tools. From planning cities to looking after the environment, these better tools show endless chances of space tech. The space above us is buzzing with action as big companies and governments team up or face off. From Amazon's new space internet to the exciting plans for new space stations, there's a lot happening. And with cool new satellite tech like Hotstamp 1, the future looks exciting. Like what you heard? Hit the like and subscribe button for more.